In this video, I'm going to help you understand the results of your hearing test and why it will dictate your performance with hearing treatment. Coming up. This video is sponsored by Natus, formerly Otometrics, the preferred diagnostic equipment supplier of Dr. Cliff AUD. Since the 1950s, Otometrics has been one of the most innovative manufacturers of hearing aid fitting equipment and diagnostic hearing and balance equipment in the industry. When it comes to testing and treating my patients, I only want to work with the best. This is why I use Natus in my clinic. If you've ever had your hearing tested inside of an audiology clinic or an ENT clinic, then you probably remember having to raise your hand or click on a button every time that you heard those beeps. You also probably remember having to listen for words and repeating them back as accurately as possible. You may even remember them reviewing your results, like the graph with the X's and O's and your word recognition percentages. But there is a solid chance that you were never actually told how those results impact your hearing, at least not in a way that you were able to understand and remember. That's why I believe that how those results are explained has a huge impact on your ability to understand your own hearing loss and how it impacts your hearing and communication abilities. So I'm going to use the counseling tools inside of the Otosuite software for my Astera 2 audiometer to give you a better understanding of exactly how your hearing loss is impacting your hearing. First, let's discuss air conduction testing on the graph portion of your audiogram. These X's and O's represent air conduction testing, which is basically the pathway of sound from your outer ear through your middle ear into your inner ear, which is your cochlea. Your hearing care professional will perform this air conduction testing by either placing headphones on your head or foam earphones inside of your ear canals. Then they will start by playing audible beeps to you, having you raise your hand or click a button every time you hear one of these beeps, eventually finding your hearing thresholds, which are the softest sounds that you can hear. We plot the responses to these beeps on the graph portion of your audiogram. The blue X's represent the hearing thresholds of your left ear, and the red O's represent the hearing thresholds of your right ear. And yes, the left and the right are supposed to be flip-flopped on the screen. These beeps measure two things, how severe your hearing loss is, and at what frequency or pitch your hearing loss is at. The further down you see these markings on the graph, the worse your hearing sensitivity is. If you can hear the beeps when they are really soft, you would see them towards the top of this graph. If you could only hear the beeps when they are really loud, you would see them towards the bottom of the graph. When we look at the frequencies tested, you have low frequencies on the left side of the graph, mid frequencies in the middle of the graph, and high frequencies on the right hand side of the graph. You can think of this like a piano keyboard that has low frequency bass tone keys on the left side that increase in pitch to high frequency treble tone keys on the right side. Next, we need to discuss the brackets that you see on this graph. These represent bone conduction. So instead of sound passing from your outer ear through your middle ear to your inner ear like it does with air conduction, bone conduction basically just travels through your skull and vibrates the cochlea directly, bypassing these other middle ear and outer ear structures. For this part of the evaluation, a bone conduction headband will be placed on your head and make contact with your mastoid bone, which is the part of your skull directly behind your ear. This will vibrate your skull at the same frequencies that were tested during air conduction testing that gave us the X's and O's. When you hear the beeping sounds, you will raise your hand or click a button just like you did with air conduction testing. The results of bone conduction testing are recorded on your audiogram as brackets. These brackets represent the hearing sensitivity of your inner ear. If these brackets are within close proximity of the X's and O's, like you see on this graph, then we know that your hearing loss is isolated to your inner ear and is not being caused by your outer ear or middle ear. This is called a sensory neural hearing loss. If these brackets are significantly better than your X's or O's, like you see on this graph, then we know that your outer ear and or middle ear are contributing to either a portion or all of your hearing loss. If these brackets are in the normal range, then you have a conductive hearing loss. If these brackets are in the mild range or worse, but there is still a significant gap between them and the X's or O's, then you have a mixed hearing loss. This is the combination between a sensory neural hearing loss and a conductive hearing loss at the same time. For simplicity's sake, I'm going to go ahead and explain how a sensory neural hearing loss impacts your hearing ability because it is the single most common form of hearing loss. The graph on the left shows a normal sloping to severe high frequency sensory neural hearing loss in the right ear. The thing that is particularly interesting about this hearing loss is the speech sounds that the individual would be missing. And the Astera 2 allows us to place an overlay of these sounds on the graph so we can see exactly which sounds would not be audible to this individual. 
Any of these speech sounds above the X's and the O's inside of the shaded gray region are sounds that can literally no longer make it from this individual's right ear to their brain when spoken in normal conversational speech without the use of hearing treatment. Any of these speech sounds below the O's are sounds that this individual can hear without hearing treatment. In the case of a hearing loss like this, we typically hear the two following reports from patients. First, they feel like they can hear people talking, but they just can't understand them. Second, they typically report hearing difficulty and background noise. Let's take a look at why someone would report difficulty with speech understanding, otherwise known as speech clarity. The high frequency sounds are the consonant sounds. The low frequency sounds are the vowel sounds. Consonants equal clarity. Vowels equal volume. When your brain loses access to high frequency consonant sounds, clarity goes away and it starts to sound like people are mumbling. This is why you can hear people talking, but you just can't understand them. Now there are a few things that you can do without hearing treatment to get these sounds back. First is by looking at the mouth of the person talking to obtain visual cues. If you can see their mouth moving, your brain can start to associate their mouth movements with the missing consonant sounds filling in the gaps of what your ears can't hear. Second, you can use the context surrounding what someone is talking about. This is how you can hear and understand everything that I'm saying right now, even if you have an untreated hearing loss like the one you see in this graph. While the use of these compensation techniques are not recommended as a long-term solution for individuals with hearing loss, they can definitely help. Next, let's take a second to talk about why individuals with this type of hearing loss have difficulty in background noise. When someone with normal hearing finds themselves in background noise, their brain utilizes good high frequency hearing to separate the speech from the background noise, which happens to be low frequency in nature. According to the test results, this individual would hear background noise really well because of their good low frequency hearing ability, but wouldn't have access to the proper high frequency speech components that are needed to help separate speech from noise. This creates a listening environment that is nearly impossible to hear in successfully. Let's jump over to the other graph to look at the left ear results. Right off the bat, you can see that the biggest difference is the moderate low frequency hearing loss in addition to the severe high frequency sensory neural hearing loss. Remember, a low frequency hearing loss would take away the perception of vowel sounds that give volume to speech. This individual would likely report that people don't talk loud enough, especially soft spoken individuals. Now what we don't want to do is just jump to the conclusion that this individual needs hearing aids as their best and only treatment option. We still don't know the whole story. At this point, we only know exactly how much amplification we need to give this individual to return these speech sounds to their brain, but what we need to do now is speech testing so we can see how well this individual can comprehend speech. We first start by doing speech reception thresholds, which are when we play recorded sounds to you and have you repeat them back to us. We make these sounds softer and softer to the point where you can only repeat 50% of the words correctly. We check to see if these levels that you can repeat words back is in agreement with your pure tone average from the air conduction testing performed earlier, which is an average between your thresholds at 500, 1000, and 2000 Hertz. However, the type of speech testing that will determine how well you perform with hearing aids is your word recognition score, or WRS. This is when we play recorded words to you at levels that are high enough to ensure that your brain has access to most or all of the speech information you've been missing due to your hearing loss. After presenting a list of words at an amplified level to accommodate for your hearing loss, the software calculates the percentage of words that you got correct. The higher this percentage correct, the better off you are. These percentages indicate how well you should expect to hear speech in a quiet situation, when you can't see the mouth of the person talking to you, and when you don't have access to context. If these percentages are really high, then you should expect to receive a lot of benefit from hearing treatment. If these percentages are really low, however, you should not expect to receive a lot of benefit from hearing treatment. I often tell my patients that I care more about the percentages than I do about the X's and O's that are on the graph. As long as I can amplify adequately for those X's and O's and get audibility to you, then I know that you're going to be able to understand that information once it makes it to your brain. So even if you have a really bad, severe to profound hearing loss, but you have good word recognition percentages, I could expect to place hearing aids in your ears, amplify them appropriately, and have you perform pretty well. 
There are a lot of different hearing losses that are out there, but as long as you understand the basics of the type of hearing loss that you have, the severity of your hearing loss, and your word recognition percentages, you should be able to understand how hearing treatment can impact your overall hearing ability. That's it for this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. If you like the video, please share it. And if you want to see other videos just like this one, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Also, feel free to check out my website, drcliffaud.com.